Mr. Zach, what do you think about this? They have just announced that a new version of the Karate Kid is coming out, and you know how much I love the Karate Kid. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have actually just announced that a Karate Kid musical is coming to Broadway. It actually premiered in St. Louis for, I guess, a limited run, and um, it must have done well because they are taking it to Broadway. There's no dates yet on the site. But I think this is kind of an interesting concept. My first gut reaction was, why? Why are they doing this? But um, what, are you, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, well, I mean, I'm not against doing any forms of media of entertainment. I mean, you're expressing yourself. Have fun. But to me, what I always find weird about when, when things jump from like – and it's the same reinterpretation. It's nothing – so – I guess what I'm saying is we already have a live form of this and and it pretty much sums it everything up. And the question I come into is what is going on in this musical that is bringing more to the story that we need to be told through music versus the live performance of Karate Kid. So it's kind of odd to actually, I don't know, I find it a little strange to go this way. But on the same point too is, I mean, there's a lot of fans out there of Karate Kid, and after, oh my God, I don't want to say it's like 30 years now, isn't it? Uh, More than. Oh God, <laughs> I didn't, no, it's like 30. Oh my God, oh, it's been go 33 on. years since Part Three. Yes, but I'm thinking from the first one now, because this is all about the first one, isn't it? It was 1984. It's about the first one, yes. Yeah. So 1984 yeah. was. So we're looking at what 28 years? Or yeah, we're going. Years. We're. I. I know. Now I feel old. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, isn't, I mean, and that is kind of amazing in itself that we have a product, you know, a, a movie that came out almost 40 years ago and struck such a chord that it's still being retold again uh, to the next generation. So, I mean, that tells you how powerful, you know, martial arts mean to people and how much people have passion for this Um for this movie and also martial arts. So in that sense, I love it. So, yeah, I have to agree with you. Cause my, my, my first gut reaction just like usually is, is like, why, why are they doing this? But I thought about it and I, I listened to what they were talking about. And, um, I think the approach is the correct way. Like they're not trying to emulate the movie frame by frame the way it is. From my understanding is it's actually told from Miyagi's point of view in a flashback format. So right away, the perspective is different. And when you have that kind of a perspective change, um, there's a lot possible with the story. And there's a lot of flashback sequences with they have um, spirits on stage that will be behind Miyagi mimicking the motion. And uh, the actor who was playing Miyagi, he said that um, the one thing he did not want to do was emulate Pat Morita. He goes, there's only one Pat Morita. There's no way I could be that or outdo that. So he started to look for values in himself and what he identified with with the Karate Kid and what he thought he could connect with and kind of bring out his own version of Miyagi. So I do respect that. And I think that if you're going to do a musical like this, that's kind of the way to go because you don't want to, if you're just going to do the same thing, then what's the point? Exactly. That's that. I, I do agree with you completely. If you're doing the exact same thing, then what's the point? Um, I just, like you said, I have to, I mean, without seeing it, but you know, I've been pleasantly surprised on many fronts about when things change genres and it actually works. It's just, it, it seems remarkable to me still, you know, 40 years later, pretty much. And this thing's still going strong. And we're not just talking about just the TV show Cobra Kai. I mean, the movie itself still has people that are really big fans and loving it. And it's still, even with the next generation, still watching it 40 years later and they're still loving it. Absolutely. Now, my curiosity is, what is the actual music going to be? Because it doesn't really lend itself originally to be a musical. So I'm kind of curious, what what kind of impact, what kind of songs do you, do you put into something like this? I, I don't know. I mean, do you, do you I mean, because the, the, the original movie had so much more um, 80s uh, uh, texture and style to the movies. I mean, it just was so full of I mean, when you think of the Karate Kid, you really think of 80s, you know, music. So I, I, I don't know. Are they going to go that way or are they going to try to uh, that? that I, 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 I'm just kind of curious to see. Are they going to sing, you know, you know, be your best? I mean, 
<laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't think I would hate that. I don't think I would hate that. <laughs> you probably have would be singing it in the shower every night. Yeah. And it's weird because this actually it's not just a karate kit, but there seems to be a trend lately of making you know popular movies into musicals. Cause not that long ago there's um I believe Turing in, in the UK is Back to the Future the musical, and it's been pretty well received for what I've seen. And we've had the Lord of the Rings musical and and a countless others. So I, I'm wondering if this is a trend of just taking all our favorite movies of like the people who are like our, our generation have grown up and gotten their theater degrees and been in the theater. Are they now taking their favorite stories as if they were fairy tales and just doing their own translations on the stage? Yeah. I, I mean, I think part of it has to do with is if you're a musical theater lover, I mean, there's not too much musical theater out right now um, for you. Um, and being, I mean, I mean, we do have the occasional, you know, big hits. Um, can't think of the word, the one that the, taking place in Broadway about the forefathers of, of the United States. Um, but oh, there's Hamilton, not yeah. Hamilton. Exactly. Yeah. But there's not too much, you know, for a while there, you know, we had uh, the, the TV show on the music theater and people really loved it. But I know just when the greatest showman came out, they just, you know, it was a huge kind of, um, you know, thing for the musical theater people. So I have a funny feeling that they're also kind of tired of doing musical theater where no one's coming to see. I mean, rarely, if you do something where people are interested in, they're going to come and, and, and say, eh, I'll take a gander. I mean, we wouldn't go and see just a random musical about some kid being beat up, but now you throw in, you know, that it's um, the karate kid. Now we're interested. Now we want to go and see. So it's it's yeah. standard standard stuff. We've got that connection there. Uh, we have one of our viewers here. Dan Strickland makes a pretty interesting comment. He says, music, though, kata, sparring are about tempo, rhythm, and breathing. So in a way, karate can, also, can already have like a musical value to it. And he believes that a lot of good musicians could be good martial artists. So that's an interesting way to look at it. So maybe there's some sort of implementation of kata i mean kata wasn't really a big role in the movie but it doesn't mean it can't be in the musical as well true i mean i mean that that is true with the, the temple and stuff um that that especially if we're talking about music and dance since they're more in touch with their uh, movements and the the and choreographing uh, which makes it easier for them to translate it over to the martial arts versus if you're just doing you know, performing, singing, you know, you don't have that same connection. So that'd be interesting right. to see. I'm really curious to, 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 to see it. So. Absolutely. So this clip is an excerpt from one of our recent Art of One Dojo live episodes in which we talked about the martial arts and whether or not they should be allowed or taught in the prison system. Now, I'm going to challenge you on this topic right here on your beliefs. Do you believe that the martial arts should be taught or should not be taught? We look at it from both angles. So you tell me what you think. Should the martial arts be allowed in prison? <laughs> 